Prior to Shenmue's release, people in video games tended to look like a block of polygons with a JPEG of a face pasted onto their head. If you were lucky, the characters would look somewhat human in a pre-rendered cutscene. So when my friend Neil booted this shit up on his Dreamcast back in 1999, it was like, Oh shit! What? That? That's the actual graphics? How was it doing that? How are they thinking that? Even today, there are some impressive qualities about the game, like how every NPC has their own routine and can be talked to. Hey. Hey, mister! Let's play baseball! You can open individual drawers in a cabinet. Uh, you can, uh, get these capsule toys. Why so dumb? I think a good one is ready to come out of this capsule toy machine. Do you please give me a hundred yen? Sorry, I'm in a hurry. 100 yen each. This is cool! But I think the most interesting aspect of Shenmue is how it serves as a little virtual window into Japan. You have Ryu's house that is all segmented by these sliding doors, the toilet is built into the floor like I don't know what the fuck you do with that thing. Every time he goes in the house, he has to take his shoes off outside, they have a big koi pond and a dojo. The houses have these little plaques with the name of the family who lives there. Then on the main strip you got uh, Tom who is permanently dancing in front of his hot dog stand. I've never been to Japan, but I'm a Assuming this is all exactly right, especially the part with Smeagol. <laughs> you have this incredible soundtrack. You have QTE sequences that are actually well made. You have clunky but satisfying combat. All of these elements should add up to a great game, but they don't. The primary gameplay of Shenmue consists of walking around and asking people questions about stuff they usually don't know about. Do you know any place where sailors hang out? Do you know a guy named Charlie? Did you see a black car? Do you know where there's a payphone around here? Do you know where the antique shop is? Mario, would you teach me some Italian? Do you know about Nagai Industries? Do you know anything about the old warehouse district? Do you know anybody who's familiar with the harbor? Do you know of a cheap way to travel overseas? As you've probably noticed, the voice acting is really, really good. It's honestly the most entertaining aspect of Shenmue. Bastard! I'm gonna kick your ass! But what kills this game for me is how you're constantly forced to just wait around for the next thing to happen. There was a part where my only objective for that day was to go to the tattoo parlor and talk to the guy who runs it, so I get there. It's closed. So now I have to wait until 2 p.m. for it to open, and I mean, look at my watch. It takes a while for time to elapse in this game. So finally, the store opens. Tomorrow at 3, wait at the arcade. Fuck you! So now I have to walk home, go to bed. Oh wait, it's not late enough for me to sleep yet. So now I just stare into a corner until it's 8 p.m., go to sleep, get up at 8.30, and wait until 3 p.m. so I can play the rest of the game. This is dog shit game design. Excuse me. I'm looking for some gameplay. I'm sorry, but can you ask me later? It's a shame this remastered version just straight up broke on me before I could get to the good part of the game where you get a job as a forklift driver and have to go to work every day. Shenmue is a unique experience and a piece of gaming history, but it's also probably the single greatest example of how willing gamers are to overlook solid game design in favor of impressive technology. It isn't a fun game, but it is funny. Bye bye boy! Bye bye. Now Shenmue 2 has a feature where you can race ducks against a penguin. That's how you make a game.